أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear viewers, thank you for joining us once again for another episode of My Journey Through Islam. Now today's guest is Brother Dawood Wilkinson. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome, welcome. Um, we all go through a journey at once or one point in our life, which brings us towards Islam. Um, so if you would like to share with us the start of your journey, as far as you can remember. Well, I think we really need to go back actually before I was born because my parents um, had a conflicting blood type. My mother being rhesus negative, my father being rhesus positive. And in the 1950s when I was born, that usually meant that the first child was fine, but the second child and subsequent children uh, actually didn't survive, they died. But uh, Alhamdulillah, as a second child, for some reason, uh, I survived. And so I feel that's a special blessing for me that I was able to survive that first hurdle of life. Alhamdulillah. So your, your introduction to, um, even now when you look back to the world, was a blessing in itself. Not just a blessing of birth, but an extra special blessing. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yes. And this is something yeah. you can always refer back to. Exactly. Um, for the sake of the viewers and those who are watching, what was your upbringing like? Were you from a religious background? Were you, uh, what kind of area did you live in? How was your upbringing? Well, I was brought up um, in a Christian family. My parents uh, Christian and um, in a very loving environment, which was very important. And um, uh, another incident which affected uh, me early on. I was about five or six years old, uh, I suppose, and we were travelling on a journey down to Cornwall for a holiday. And I called it my Mind the Gap day, <laughs> because the train had stopped in a station. There was a long delay. My father got off to go and check at the information desk or something, and I followed him. Right. Uh, but I lost sight of him and decided that I should go back to the train, back to my mother. But I misjudged and slipped down the gap between the train wow. and the platform. Mm. Uh, and it was, uh, I was a very small boy, a deep, it was like falling into a deep, dark chasm, mm. these big wheels beside me. Mm. And um, alhamdulillah, I, I couldn't climb out, but one person had seen me fall down. A stranger mm. came over, rushed over, and reached his hands down and said, reach up, reach up, and pulled me up. And it was like being born again, because I could imagine mm. um, in that dark place what it might be like for uh, Prophet uh, Yunus, Jonah, no, in fine. the whale. It was just like coming out of uh, uh, a dark, difficult place, and goodness mm. knows what would have happened coming if, uh, from that stranger yeah. who, uh, I say, uh, 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 a man, maybe he was an angel. Yeah. Allah, Allah knows, Allah but... Uh, Allah Allah. And then later that same day, amazingly, uh, we reached the destination, and we were pr playing, uh, myself and my cousins, in a, a hay barn. Mm. And I was jumping off, uh, pretending to fly, landing on the soft hay. And then we were called for dinner and everybody rushed off. And I, th I thought, oh, I'll just have one last jump. And I yeah. jumped off and landed uh, head down and slipped between the bales and wedged oh. fast. Wow. And I was suffocating down there. It was very tight mm. and I couldn't move. I couldn't get out. Mm. And my father, who was uh, was already leaving, for some reason he looked back. Wow. Uh, something, uh, Allah, Allah uh, got him to look back and he noticed two little wellies sticking <laughs> out between the hay and he rushed back and pulled me out. Um, a bit, um, uh, not, not quite as uh, the same as being pulled up by the arms, uh, but uh, alhamdulillah, it was like being born again, again in a way. Again, I was, yeah. I'd been saved, and that was another blessing. So from, from an early age, you have been through so many um, things already that have taught you to be, I guess, appreciative of life itself. Things that I remember and I think back to, mm. and my parents, uh, being Christian, they taught uh, my family some very good, strong mm. values. and. Mm. Uh, I was later to realize that Christianity and Islam have a huge overlap and there is much that we share, many mm. good things that we mm. share. So um, they brought us up in a, a very loving family mm. and uh, values like 
caring for the elderly mm. and uh, looking after neighbours. Um, my mother was um, always giving people the benefit of the doubt. So uh, she always wanted to see good in people and she wanted us to see good in people mm. rather than any bad. And she was always trying to find excuses as mm. to why somebody had done something. Something in Islam we call husn al where you look for the best in someone rather yes, than the... Yes, yes, so yes. you already had these so attributes of Islam and Muslims in your family? Indeed, family yes. And, and some of them uh, you'd feel were smaller ones, but again, still important, mm. like um, the love of nature, the looking after nature mm. um, and the environment. Um, not wasting food, always eating just taking what you, you need and eating yeah. it, everything, not leaving it to, to go to waste. Mm. Um, my parents, coming through the war, I suppose, had that uh, uh, ingrained into them and they, they passed that on as good Christian values, which turned out to be good Islamic values. Um, and not dropping litter, uh, mm. not swearing, yeah. and all those values were, were mm. very good. I was brought up in the Lake District and that was my playground. Wow. Beautiful mountains and lakes and trees and it was a wonderful place to be brought up and mm. I would go off um, playing and probably in some quite dangerous isolated places mm. and my mother was always very concerned and saying you must tell us where you go and don't go into dangerous yeah. places don't do this and even at that uh, early age of you know five six seven eight um, I, w I would say to my mother don't worry mum God's looking after me oh so yeah. I actually felt then that there was a mm, God yeah um, well there is a God looking after us. So you already uh, had some sort of connection with God, yes, with I religion. I had the faith there. Yeah. Um, I just hadn't had that any connection with Islam yeah. as, mm. uh, uh, as a word. As a mm. So as this a is you at a very young age yes. and we are building a picture or a story or the, the start of your journey really, which is one of appreciation, which is one of love amongst um, yourselves as a family as well as uh, being at one with nature and appreciating nature all around you. So I guess you're blessed in many ways from a young age. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And we are, we are yes. all blessed. Yes. So any, are there any other points in your journey, in your life that you can recall um, pre-Islam uh, as you're growing up from maybe from, from being a young child to maybe being a teenager and, and growing up from there? Yes, I think a significant stage was as a teenager and a lot of people go through um, difficult patches as yeah. teenagers and I then began to question everything. Um, is there a God? Uh, who is? Who was Jesus? Uh, what happens after we die? Mm -hmm. And I, I think I put myself through quite a lot of uh, turmoil and torment mm -hmm. trying to fathom these questions out. Yeah. I would stay awake at night trying to work them out. But after a lot of um, uh, struggle in my mind I did eventually reach some quite uh, important conclusions in my life um, and the first was the, the agreement with Christianity that there is one truth, one God um, and that that God uh, is out of time. Allah is out of time because he created time. Yeah. So it's very difficult for us to understand Allah and we shouldn't um, be too worried about not understanding everything because yeah. it's impossible for us. We to are human so. at the end of the day. Um, yeah. And I did also feel at that time that the prophets, um, alayhi wa salam, all of them, all of them were men, not, they didn't have uh, divine uh, attributes mm. like Christianity yeah. gives uh, a divinity attribute to uh, Isa, to Jesus, alayhi wa salam. So. Um, but I felt that um, they were men, but very special men. Mm. I believed that they were very special. They'd done something special for yeah. uh, mankind and they had special skills. Mm. So there I already had the, the beginning of the foundation. And with mm. my parents' love and teaching of the good mm. Christian values, yeah. I had that strengthening foundation mm. um, that was ready for uh, Islam. For the next step, subhanAllah. Yes. So as you were growing up being a teenager, you know, when you think of the teenagers nowadays, you may not think that they are going through their own internal battles or internal struggles, but maybe they are. I'm sure they are. <coughs> and yeah. I think if given the right environment, mm. they too will reach good conclusions, yeah. inshallah, and mm. find uh, the right path. Okay. And another um, uh, 
wonderful thing for me was where I, I was bring, being brought up in the Lake District and my parents' uh, love of nature and wanting t me to learn and to teach me all the, mm. the names of the birds and the, yeah. the butterflies and so on. And so I'd go out bird watching with my father uh, and mother and we'd uh, learn all sorts of things. And I remember one uh, occasion when my father uh, looked, pointed to a, a, a grass stalk with a, one of those wonderful grass flowers at the top of it. And he simply said, there is God. But he didn't mean that, that is grass <laughs> stalk is God. What he meant, and I, he, he explained to me yeah. and I understood, was that these signs around us in nature uh, are actually the evidence and all the evidence we need mm. to be able to believe and have a strong faith yes, in the one true God, mm. in, in Allah. And this complements, so of course, the teachings of Islam, which is that when we look around and we see the signs of the creation, when we see the signs of, sorry, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are proof that there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I guess this is what your parents, your father especially, who you've mentioned, has really instilled in you. And, of course, the attributes and the values and the characteristics of your mother, subhanAllah. Um, the journey so far seems to be coming along really nicely, alhamdulillah. And we are really building a picture of you and your personal life. Um, but inshallah, what we'll do is we'll go off to a break now, inshallah, and we'll ask you and we hope that you can come back and join us for part two of my journey through Islam with Brother Dawood Wilkinson. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and thank you for joining us for part two of today's episode with Dawood Wilkinson. So, Brother Dawood, we have um, painted a picture now, alhamdulillah, of you as a young child going through many experiences, of you as a teenager asking questions, um, having this internal kind of, not a battle, but a struggle with yourself to try and understand God and understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and through the help of, I guess, the teachings of your parents and your family, you are starting to understand this a little bit more. So what was the next step in your journey and what kind of brought you again towards the light of Islam? Well, I think the next important step um, was my interest in nature led to an interest in honeybees <coughs> and beekeeping. And uh, alhamdulillah, my uh, parents had, uh, and we had lots of uncles and aunts who were very loving and had a great uh, respect and love of nature as well. And in particular, uh, my uncle Ernest and my auntie June, um, uh, they taught me uh, so much and my uncle happened to keep bees. I started reading a little about uh, honeybees and uh, very soon he brought over some bees and started me off in a wonderful journey of life learning, uh, teaching me about bees and how to look after them and how to be become a beekeeper. Mm -hmm. And the more I learned about bees the more I found that there was to learn. And um, I built an observation hive uh, as a, uh, a teenager, which I set up on my bedroom windowsill. It was a large windowsill. And uh, I drilled a hole through the, the window frame with my father's permission, so that the bees could still go out and collect their nectar and pollen. But I could lie uh, on my bed and watch all the marvelous things that honeybees do. Uh, so by looking through the glass, I could see them doing all the natural behavior without actually opening and disturbing them. And oh, wow. it's absolutely amazing to think that a honeybee has the brain, uh, has a brain about the size of a pinhead, a tiny uh, small brain, but it has a whole repertoire of behavior. Um, when it emerges from its cell, uh, the beginning of its life, it's born, and it doesn't have to go to a school for bees. It immediately knows, uh, it has programmed in it, yeah. or Allah has programmed in it, all that it needs to, uh, for all the different behaviors, yeah. all the skills. So it starts off cleaning the, the, the cells of the hive, uh, feeding the brood with some yeah. special food that the, the brood needs. And um, later stages, uh, they uh, change to uh, building the wonderful hexagonal comb structures that they use mm -hmm. for storing honey, for storing pollen, for, for rearing new uh, young bees. Uh, and the hexagonal shape 
uh, and the base of the cells they've looked at mathematically and the physics of it and found that it is the ideal shape to hold the weight of the honey. It has, has the maximum strength for holding so the maximum yeah. volume. <coughs> but the bees didn't study physics of or course. maths. They, they have that programmed in. Um, they look after the queen who lays so many eggs she can lay uh, between one and two thousand eggs per day, funny, which is yeah. astonishing. Wow. And then they go out foraging for the honey and nectar towards the when, when, when they're older. And when they forage, they come back and do the, the dance, mm. which is a figure of eight dance where they run one way and then round and back again. And in the darkness of the hive, other bees follow this by feeling them. Mm. They follow by with their antennae it's by feel. Funny. And the the bee has. Um, is using this uh, this dance to translate the position of where the honey source is to the dance in the hive. Mm -hmm. So if the source of the honey is, uh, say for example, 45 degrees to the right of where the sun is, they dance 45 degrees to the right of the vertical Super in the hive. Nice. They've not been taught any of this, mm. it's just their natural uh, uh, ability. Mm. And the tempo of the dance tells the following bees how far away. So a bee can follow the dance and then go out on its own and find the, 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 this food source. So in a way, so it's, like, it's like a sat satellite navigation for the bees. Yes, and they, they create a, a landscape in their tiny little so brains nice. of how to go out and how to get mm. back to the, the their hive again. So, so your love of love of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala led you to the creator uh, in a way. It was, I guess yes. it, was, it was the beginning yes. because imagine this is one bee and when we think of bees and you know there's some children who see a bee and they get scared and they run the other direction but when you look at the creation itself and remember this is only one creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are millions and millions of creations um, so when you appreciate something, I can I can really relate to this and say when you see one creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you see how many different things he can do with such a tiny brain um, n in their natural habitat, in their natural state, subhanAllah, yeah. what else is there? So I, 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 I'm guessing and, I, and you know you can carry on with your story to tell us that this really ignited some sort of spark inside you. Oh it did and I'll just tell you one uh, other quick thing about the, the bees navigation mm -hmm. is um, there because we see a spectrum of colours, but they see a, a slightly shifted, different spectrum of colours. They can see ultraviolet. Okay. And this helps them to navigate because uh, even when it's cloudy, they know where the sun is mm. because the polarised light in the ultraviolet gets through the clouds, and so they can tell from that the position of the sun. So they can carry on with their system of navigation even when it's cloudy. Uh -huh. And if they're held in the hive for a short while because of rain or whatever, their little brain recalculates how far the sun has moved. Wow. And That's all these things are, are just wondrous t to us. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, and, I, and I can see by the way you're speaking that there are a lot of scientific terms in there. So is there some sort of scientific background to your study or is there something? Yes, indeed the science. I, <coughs> I became very... Um, uh, interested in uh, uh, science in particular, but mm. my father always encouraged us to learn in whatever field that learning was very important. Again, another uh, I Islamic uh, teaching too. Mm. And so I, I, I studied science and I went off to university, uh, but I still had this great passion for uh, studying bees because that had fascinated me so much. Mm. And so when an opportunity arose um, down um, in the Midlands of a job uh, working with bees, I, I, I jumped to take up that job. And it's, it was like a veterinary service for beekeepers. So I was looking at what diseases they might suffer from and how we could treat them and how mm. beekeepers could and look what after was your their bees better. And what was your age like at this point? So and have you had your education as well at this point? So yes, I'd gone through my education and I'd, um, I was about 20, 21 when I went to uh, uh, start this job and there I uh, worked and studied bees and learned so much more about them yeah. um, but being there in the Midlands that was where I met a lovely family of Muslims in mm -hmm. Redditch just to the south of Birmingham and they were so welcoming and I was impressed by all their their good actions and that really moved me and that uh, that, that touched my heart, and so that was a, a very 
um, a very strong message that, mm. that stuck with me mm. and made me think that, you know, that there's something special there. Mm. So meeting this family or meeting this group of Muslims, how did that impact your life from then on? Because of course you said it touched you, it opened your eyes. What process was it for you to kind of learn more about Islam? Well, it must have affected me enough that when I was um, visiting Birmingham for some other reason, uh, I, want, I went to visit um, uh, Birmingham Central Mosque, the, okay. the big mosque in Birmingham. Yeah. And again, um, they were so welcoming, they were full of smiles, and for them it was the best of dawah, because there, again, it opened my eyes, and it was like, like someone had switched on a light. In fact, Allah had switched yeah, on uh, a light in my life. Mm. So um, I, there's a special uh, verse in the Quran about light, which yeah. if I may, I'd like to uh, yeah, just uh, quickly uh, Prepared. Uh, read this. I've, I've written da down this. I'll take my glasses off. Uh, it's in Surat al-Nur, the yeah. light, verse 35. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The metaphor of his light is that of a niche in which there is a lamp, the lamp inside a glass, the glass like a brilliant star lit from a blessed tree, an olive, neither of the east nor of the west, its oil all but giving off light even if no fire touches it. Light upon light, Allah guides to his light whoever he wills, and Allah makes metaphors for mankind, and Allah has knowledge of all things. So your journey yeah. through life as a whole was coming to a point now where things started to make even more sense than I guess they already uh, made sense um, and, and you were really introduced to Islam and Muslims at this point what I'm going to have to do now is inshallah we're going to have to stop you there but inshallah we ask the viewers to join us once again for another episode with Brother Dawood Wilkinson we thank you for joining us today and we hope you can join us in the future as well Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh